Now, from across the Tri-States, this is KHQA Sports. Well, this is Saturday, September the 15th, and you have entered overtime, a steamy burgoo of highlights, stories, and scores mixed with just a subtle dash of whimsy, slow slimmered and ladled out lovingly by yours truly because good sports soothes the soul. Lots of mm -mm good stuff today on our docket, including tournament volleyball from Keokuk and tournament softball from Louisiana. Plus, we've got week four of the high school football season to wrap up tonight with a look back at big wins by Q&D Clark County and a look forward today into the carnage that Pittsfield Griggsville Perry wrought at the expense of Bunker Hill. Not to mention all your college grid happenings near and far, but we start tonight with Luke Guthrie on a pretty binge of amazing proportions today. Luke fired a 62. That's nine under par. That includes seven birdies and one eagle today to go from out of contention, barely making the cut into second place in a tie two strokes off the lead. That pace is currently being set and set by Michael Putnam. Luke up winning, trying to win his first professional golf tournament tomorrow. We'll keep you apprised. Hopefully keeping our fingers crossed for Quincy's finest. And speaking of Quincy's finest, the debut tonight of Tom Padgett football at Quincy University. Also homecoming, also the Hawks GLVC debut. All of it trying to be spoiled by undefeated Indianapolis, or excuse me, winless Indianapolis. And they would do just that. This is Clay Feichter taking the punt return right here and finding a seam straight up the middle, then right to the outside as he busts his way 65 yards just four minutes into this ball game to put Indy up at that point, seven to nothing. Fiker was a thorn in the Hawks side all night long. This 15 yard touchdown rumble would extend the Greyhounds lead at that point to 14 to nothing. You know what? The Hawk defense was very, very good tonight as the Greyhounds try to make it 21 to nothing. This sack pushes the Greyhounds out of scoring position. They would settle for nothing going at the half up 14 to nothing. Unfortunately, the Hawks could mount no offense in this game to speak of first half. They couldn't even cross midfield. Finally, right here, it looks like the Hawks have a drive going. They drive deep down into the red zone, but a couple of bad plays and maybe a poor call right here on third and eight with the draw end up with a field goal attempt. It would be thwarted. The Hawks walk away with nothing at that point. And then on the ensuing possession, Mr. Mills goes to the air and Marquan Edwards is going to rumble away from the Hawks 53 to nothing that blows the game or 53 yards to make it 21 to nothing that blows the game wide open. Quincy University loses their debut at home tonight 35 to 7 was your final. How about Western Illinois on the road tonight undefeated taking on the Cyclones in Ames and the Cyclones were equal to the task as you would expect tonight. Full Division One program taking on an FCS Division One program kind of an unfair matchup but I tell you what, the Leathernecks at least played well until this point. James White with a 56-yard touchdown rumble to put the Cyclones up at that point, 7 to nothing. We're not done yet. Steel Jantz, the quarterback, looking for his man Chris Young. This combination proved lethal to the next in the first half as the lead was 14 to nothing, just like that for the Cyclones. They're not done yet. More of Jantz and Young. This combination, like Ernst and Young tonight, rock solid as you will see it again for another touchdown to extend the Cyclones lead out to 21 to nothing. All the uh, wild or excuse me, all the Leathernecks could muster today in the scoring column would be a field goal by Patrick Smith. That would be it as the Leathernecks lose for the first time this season. 37 to 3 Western Illinois starts conference play coming up next week. Let's go to the high school docket today. Well, we've got a couple of scores to pass along. As you see, Iowa State wins 37 to 3 was your final in that ball game. Other college scores to pass along. Culver Stockton falls to 0 and 3 in the season and Truman State was leading Evangel going into the fourth quarter by a huge margin. 49 to 14. Now onto the high school fun. Pittsfield Griggsville Perry striking up the band for more Saturday football hosting Bunker Hill. First play from scrimmage would be a good omen for Pittsfield Griggsville Perry. Not so much for the Minutemen of Bunker Hill were, who were overmatched from the get go in this one. We'll start you off right here with Wade Smith going to the air. First play, good call. Mason Damon wide open. That's a pickup of 40 yards and that would set the table two plays later for Isaac Whitaker. Big Ike going to rumble his way into the end zone doing what fullbacks do, just running people over at that point. Made it eight to nothing after the two point conversion and a wild first quarter was on for the Saki. CQ exchange is not really a strong point for the Minutemen in this game. Eli Petty with the recovery right there. 
Unfortunately, Pittsfield would cough the ball right back up. Still, things would go wrong even when things went right for the Minutemen here. This pass attempt from the end zone ruled a safety on grounding. Look for a minute like Austin Beard was going to get the touchdown. Nope. It is Eli Petty registering the safety at that point, and then the offense takes back over. This guy, Zach Abney, he's just a warrior going inside for the score right there. He's going to take the touchdown, follow that caravan, caravan of protection. More to come right here from the defense as well. Ty Rylander with the fumble recovery. All of this in the first quarter. It's already 18 to nothing. Wade Smith, this time keeping the ball of his own accord. He's going to reach the end zone untouched as the Sockies just keep building in this game. 26 to nothing at that point. More scoring to come. We're going to give you a Socky season highlight tape tonight because they scored just that much. This time on the toss sweep, Zach Abney again running away from everybody, showing off the speed. He's not only a strong back, he is a back with some burst as well. 34 to nothing. Then the block punt right here by Brendan McConnell leads to an Eli Petty score. My goodness, Pittsfield scoring in every fashion imaginable. All of this in the first quarter. It was 41 to nothing before you could blink. And it ended up being 67 to 6 today as Pittsfield Griggsville Perry improves to 2 and 2 on the season. Well, our friends in beautiful Peoria last night, one more score to pass along, I should say. Greenfield, for those of you in the WIVC South, Greenfield a winner today in shutout fashion over North Green, 41 to nothing. Well, our friends in Peoria last night stayed to the bitter end to bring us the conclusion of Quincy Notre Dame's potentially season-saving win over then undefeated Peoria Notre Dame. So it may be 24 hours late, but it's still plenty fun to watch. We take you to the ball game where it would be Peoria Notre Dame jumping out early in this game to a 14 to nothing lead. But the Raiders would answer and their defense would stiffen. This is Chad Thompson with the interception to stymie what could have been another scoring drive for PND. However, with two minutes and five seconds left, a turning point apparently. 14 all tie, Matthew Sheeran, the powerful kicker from Peoria Notre Dame, boots one home, makes it 17-14. The Raiders' seasons and their playoff hopes in jeopardy, but look at the drive that ensues. Joe McKay to Jordan Chapel, hook and lateral to Nick Wyman, who was a monster last night. 17-yard pickup, and then with 25 seconds left, who are you going to call? Nick Wyman in for the game-winning score, and the Raiders get it done last night. 21-17. Big win for Q&D. Also a big win from a mental standpoint last night for Clark County taking on Macon, a team that had knocked them out of the playoffs the last couple of years. But Macon off to a great start. Craig Smith right here with a hookup to Levi Walker. This would touch off a 55-yard opening series drive as Macon looked very good against that very good Clark County defense. This is Tyrone Walker on the other end of the pass reception from Craig Smith. And that leads to this. Mr. Smith from one yard out in for the score. Quick lead for Macon in this ball game. Quick answer from Austin Egley and the Clark County Indians as Egley's going to the air and Jacob Trump is going to the house. 65 yards later, he's in for the score. The Macon defense trying to ratchet it up just a bit after that. This is kind of a miscue. Bryce Budrew is going to get hit and knocked around some. But you know what? You can't really knock around the Clark County offense. These kids are tough. Austin Egley among them. Big pickup here to set up a Bryce Budrew touchdown as Clark County ends up pulling away and picking up the victory last night. And speaking of football fun last night, you've had a chance to vote all day on our Facebook page for your Week 4 Hero of the Week. And you have all the way up until Wednesday to do so at 8 o'clock. We will honor that winner on Duerisms when it comes out on Thursday. Your list of nominees is about 15 to 20 deep this week. But so far, Tyler Steinkamp from Mark Twain, who already won this award two weeks ago, is your leader by a pretty fair margin right now over Palmyra's Dylan Parrish. Tyler Steinkamp with a big night, five touchdowns and 303 rushing yards in Mark Twain's win over Louisiana. But again, you have all week long to vote for your favorites. If you don't see the poll at the top of my Facebook page, which you can access through Duerisms, just scroll on down. It's there. Lots of nominees to vote for. Vote for your favorite and get a deserving kid a chance to be honored this week. And hey, when we come back, we dive into an illuminating, illuminating day, I should say, of softball, soccer, and spikes right here when overtime continues. You're watching KHQA Overtime with Chris Dewar. Brought to you by Con Communications. And welcome back to Overtime, everybody. During his now nearly two-decade reign in Jefferson City, Eddie Horn has turned the Jays, a football powerhouse, into a formidable soccer enterprise. And they would certainly provide a hefty test for Matt Longo's homestanding Blue Devils today, who got the rare chance to play on homecoming weekend at home. Nice stuff for the Blue Devils. Jefferson City and 
Quincy High School scoreless in the first half. The Devils had their chances, though, but Jeff City's keeper was solid to keep this a scoreless tie in the half. Second half, though, Ben Merrow gets into the box. This throw-in shot goes off the crossbar, and the rebound would sail over the top of the goal at that point. More to come. 12 minutes left. Jefferson City would be given a PK in this one, but Jason Ebbing nepotism rules is equal to the task in goal today for the Blue Devils, and that stymie proved huge. Five minutes left. Merrow the throw in right here through traffic goes into the far pole. Looks like it was not touched. That would not be allowed. However, it was allowed. We looked at it in slow motion. It might have been touched, might not have been touched. No matter, at the end of the day, the Blue Devils are given a controversial one to nothing victory over a very good Jefferson City team. That's a win, and Matt Longo will take it. Moving on now, Quincy Notre Dame and U High playing soccer today. Scoreless first half, Parker Rees battling for the ball in the box, but gets taken down, and he's going to be awarded a penalty kick. He will gather his senses quickly. And he's going to work with the nifty finesse shot right to the left, giving QND a one to nothing lead. Same score at the half. U High tied it early in the second half. Nathan Dreyer here with a near miss that would have put QND back up again. Five minutes left, still 1 1. Cooper Reese lobs the ball in for Parker Reese, who's going to give his team the apparent golden goal at the 75 minute mark. Unfortunately for the Raiders, three minutes later, U High would answer and actually force the tie today. So QD ends up with a tie two to two. And as you heard me mention, Parker Reese with both goals on the day. Let's talk some volleyball today. Let's talk Quincy High School. Monsters are the Blue Devils as they take out Alleman and Rock Island in quad play today. India Green big today. She had 50 assists on the day. Monica Bumbring big as well today with 21 kills between those two games. Also, more volleyball for you today up at the Harmony Tournament. West Hancock finishes third. Big day for Madison Harmon serving as she had 16 total aces, which is a hefty day's worth of work for Miss Harmon. Good for her. Again, the Titans take third place in that tournament with a 3-2 and two overall record. And look at the Hannibal Lady Pirates. They continue to take care of business and conference play, going to 2-0 and o today, beating Marshall in straight games and leaving no doubt about it. Keokuk today hosting their own tournament and the Chiefs taking on Iowa City Regina early pool play and Regina had already won game number one when Keokuk trying to make a comeback. Rachel Dunlop big in game number two. Huge spike from her there. Then Rachel again throwing down hard in between two sets of wickets there for the kill. She's not done. Rachel doing everything the side out to give her team a 17 to 16 lead. Timeout Regina trying to avoid the upset and gather themselves Kirby Sanders right here with a great hit, but to no avail as Regina ends up winning in two to move past Keokuk. We'll stick with the highlights here. You're looking at Central Lee in the early pool play taking on Burlington Notre Dame. You're looking at Taylor Burdett, and she is tall. Six foot three of her, and she throws down the nasty block right there. Burdett doing it right again just to open this game up as game number one would go to Central Lee 21-11. They're not done. Bailey McCoy going to come up with a nice kill right into your living room. Don't wince on your Barker lounger. It is TV. It looks a little 3D-ish, but it's not. Reagan Mickelson coming up right here with a beautiful kill going away from you as well. And then it's Jordan Greenfield and Carlin Adams serving up back-to-back -back aces as Central Lee wins their opening match today, 21-11, 21-11. We're going to stick with the highlights, though, for just one more bit of seconds or one more bit of time, I should say, as it's Melissa Friesmeyer and Holy Trinity, the favorite coming into this tournament, undefeated, taking on Fort Madison, the battle of Fort Madison early in this one, and Michaela Fecky was having none of it. This is why she's so highly regarded. She gets up to get down, throwing down hard right there. She's not done. She's going to get a little assistance right here from Caitlin Frazee on the block. And then some service fun from Jordan Friesmeyer with the ace. Game number one in favor of Holy Trinity in this one, 21-4. The cute kids couldn't bring Fort Madison any luck in this one as it's just going to get worse in game number two. Michaela Fecky and you just got Fecky as she throws down and throws down hard with the block. And this is just a thing of beauty from the super sophomore as Holy Trinity not only wins this match, but they win five matches on the day to take the tournament title. Holy Trinity now 16 and 0 on the season. We've got some scores of the softball type nature to pass along. Clark County today at the Paris Invite opens the day with a 3 to 1 win over Madison. Look to be in serious trouble today in the semifinals, taking on Salisbury down by the score of 8. No, check that 8 to 2 going into the final inning. Seven runs 
does Clark County come back with to win and force their way into the championship game, which was good enough as the Indians knock off Paris, the host team, 6-4. Misha Lee Klein leading the way in that one. Clark County is your Paris tournament champion. Highland Bulldog invite today. Monroe City and Highland, the four and three seeds respectively, going at it for the title in this one. Top of the first, heads up defense from the Cougars keeps this scoreless as a throwing error at first would actually end up leading to an out at home. Highland, you know what? You just you, you try to take advantage of the aggressiveness, and Highland takes it away from Monroe City right there. Top of the second, the Panthers would strike first in this one offensively. Tegan Garner with a single to left field. Carly Spalding is going to score, make it one to nothing. Monroe. Bottom of the second, though, Highland fashioned an answer in this one. Leah Baker with a single, and Casey Hinkle is going to hustle home to tie this game up at one apiece. You've heard us talk all during track season about the speed of Carly Spaulding. By Carly was back at it again, and yes, I said by Carly as this is going to turn into an inside the park home run down the line, putting Monroe City up at two to one at that point. But Highland not going away in this match, not with a championship at stake. Highland going to answer courtesy of Avery Johnson. She drives in Amber Garner to tie this thing up at two apiece. The, the teams would go back and forth in this game. As you could tell, frenetic pace in this one. We pick it up top of the fifth. The freshman, Emily Regan, right here with a clutch hit to score Leah Elbus. Monroe City extends a lead, builds a little margin, maybe a little bit comfortable at seven to four. Not as comfortable as they would have hoped. Highland down seven to five, entering the bottom of the seventh after a sack fly made it seven to six. Carly Smith with a double here to right center field to bring the winning run to the plate. But Tegan Garner pitches out of the jam and Monroe City, your number four seed coming in is your tournament champion today by virtue of that win. Congratulations to them. Congratulations as well to the Central Junior High School softball team, which is headed to state. They knock off Liberty today in the regional. I believe they're heading to Bloomington on the 21st to take on Christ the King. Not quite score, uh, not quite sure of a time yet for that, but congratulations to the Central girls moving on to states. More congratulations on the golf side of things today. Quincy High School winning the Pekin Invite today with a 310, five strokes better than Peoria Notre Dame. Zach Burry ends the day tied for second place with a 73. At the Macomb Invite Girls Golf today, QD continues its win streak. Lucy Clark, your medalist. Jamie Earhart finishes the day in third for the victorious Lady Raiders. Also, cross country today at Peoria. More than 500 runners in this one. Luke Watson's 97th place finish may not seem impressive, but he was the third fastest runner today of all Class A runners. Congratulations to him. That's a really loaded meet and a pretty darn good showing for Luke. As I mentioned, nearly 600 runners in that darn thing. And the Quincy Notre Dame tennis team looking good today at the Titan Tennis Classic in Chatham. Third place finishes for the number one and number two doubles teams. The number one double team, the Tracys, Kristen and Olivia. The number two doubles team, Abby Moore and Melanie Schlepphorst. Congratulations to all of those fine young ladies on their tennis exploits this weekend. Let's move on now. Tis the time every Saturday. We honor the area's best sports coupling with the Con Communications Connection Award. Each week in this segment, we'll unveil our pick for the best local connection. The monthly award, however, is all up to you folks. You can go to our website during the last week of each month, peruse the nominees, and vote for your favorite. And as an inducement to vote, we're offering each and every one of you a chance with your vote to win a great prize package from Con Communications simply by going to the website, connecttristates.com, and registering your opinion. It's good stuff, isn't it? This week's nominee was historic in nature, and it was soccer-based. Hannibal looking for its first ever victory against Elias. It comes on a golden goal in the rain between Mr. Thamur, Tyler Thamur, hooking up right there with Aaron White, who's going to punch it home for the victory. Great win by uh, great win by the Pirates in this one. Historic win, first ever over Elias. And if that's your choice, go ahead and pick it and vote for it at the end of the month. The other choices you have on the docket for this month, a couple of good ones as well. The Coy Dorothy to Austin Hardy diving catch against Monmouth Roseville in football from West Hancock and Riverview's big tackle for Quincy High last week. Again, a couple more days and you can vote for your favorite.